More you talk now. Our guest today is um, well. He started his journey on his way to the NBA, which is uh, super cool. And we're going to have a chance to be able to follow him as he does this. He just recently made a commitment to play ball at Voorhees University, and he's received a scholarship, which is very cool. And uh, he is now, well, he's also an actor. We'll talk more about that, but he's <laughs> on the screen. Dude, Malachi Scott, welcome to you, talk, man. Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you doing okay now? Yeah, I'm doing good. Really good out here. Really good out here, actually. I'm having a lot of fun. Good. Good. Now, where are you? Uh, I'm in Denmark, South Carolina at Voorhees University. All right. Oh, we're gonna we gotta talk about that, man. It's great to have you. I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's busy and all kinds of stuff going on, <laughs> but I gotta tell you this: you can do something that not a lot of people can do to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm like six three. You know, so a lot of people call me the big guy, <laughs> but I ain't the big guy. You're the big guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so just a little bit. If I was standing next to you, I'd, I'd be feeling like smaller. But anyway, okay. Now you started at, um, you've been playing basketball for two years, just got this scholarship, all kinds of great stuff happening. But what's interesting to me is you played football before this. What age were you when you started playing football? Uh, so I started playing football uh, when I was five, actually, because my older brother did it at the time, ah. you know? Yeah. At the time sure. I really wasn't, I really wasn't into sports, but you know, I, I took a chance to try it out, and I really liked it, and it became, you know, my first love, and I started really getting good at it, and I ended up stopping playing in my sophomore year. Oh, interesting. And then why the switch to, to – I mean, now there's anything wrong with basketball. I played basketball yeah. in high school too. But why the switch? That's a very interesting switch. Uh, you know, uh, I was a sophomore. I was 6'5". I was playing football. I was getting tired of hitting, getting hit in my knees a lot. That, yeah. You know, it, yeah, it was getting – I was getting mad, and then – uh. The coach from Compton High, he came. He was like, you know, how about you come and him and uh, Demar Derozan was like, how about you come and come to uh, Compton High and play basketball here and just transfer over here from Long Beach, Jordan. So I took the opportunity. So you know, I'm really liking it the way uh, oh, you the know, is going. That you know, it's amazing how things came together, and they must have seen something in you. And I mean, it gets old after you're getting chopped at the knees all the time. You know, it's, it's, I got, I, I haven't really said this publicly a lot, but I, I, I wanted to play football when I was in high school, uh, okay. you know, football and basketball, but I was a drummer. Okay. And, and uh, I played in bands and we played concerts and stuff. And I had some friends from our uh, opposing high school in town say, Russo, if you, if you join the team, and I was just, just going to be a kicker, you know, they said, we're going to break both your arms and you're not going to be able to play drums again. And I, wow, okay, that's, oh, horrible. I mean, that's, that's pretty brutal. You know, and I thought, uh, that is. Uh, uh, football, drums, football. Okay. I'm doing drums, you know, but um, that's interesting. So you're, you are on your way. You're on the journey to the NBA. Yeah. You know, uh, at, the, at first, you know, NBA wasn't really the, my first goal. It was really just to make it out of Compton. And now that, you know, I'm really making it out and I'm doing something, that I feel like the NBA is getting closer and closer every day. Very cool. Well, we're going we're gonna to follow you here at Utah, and, and uh, we'll have to check with you, you know, every, every so often just to see, you know, see how things are going. Now, um, Voorhees University, I don't know how many people – I did not know this. I didn't know much about the school. But the school was founded in 1897 yes. by, um, let's see, her name is Elizabeth, let's see if I get this right, Elizabeth Evelyn Wright Menifee. Yes. And she is the first black woman to start a university. Yes, sir. Perfect. You, Man, know, that, uh, you know, that is, that's amazing. So what's that, I mean, that that's like, we're, you're at an iconic school, really. Um, you know, South Carolina, beautiful area. Um, is there, I mean, what, what's the, the feel on campus? It seems like a very, very good school. Yeah, you know, uh, I had opportunities to go to a bigger school because of my grades and my, and my basketball athleticism and, you know, my skill that was coming around. But, you know, I re uh, they, get, they flew out to California to watch me at a camp, and I did really good at the camp. And the first day I met the coach, he gave me the scholarship. And then, you know, the first, first day, the first day, 
Ooh. You know, and uh, from there, you know, he really kept it, you know, as family, as love. Like, even if you don't come to the school, I still want to support you. They really kept it as love, keeping it as family. And I was mm-hmm. just, just like, you know, come to HBCU right now. That's what everybody wants to do. Go to HBCU, have the HBCU experience because True. being at a historical black college with your, you know, your peers and everything, you know, yeah. it's, it's really what you want to do. So me come here, you know, the atmosphere is wonderful. Like, everybody talks, everybody greets you. They treat me really well. Even being a kid from Cali, coming all the way from Cali, being in uh, Carolina, you know, it's, it's a big <laughs> step because right here it's not as big as, you know, what California is. Sure, but, sure. Yeah, but, so, I mean, you've already answered part of what I was thinking, and that is what, what motivated, what excites you about being a Tiger because Tiger's a mascot. Uh, you know, what really excites me is I'm able to uh, put on for a school that's not really as big as it is, and me coming here, I want to make a statement. I want to uh, be able to put them on a the map, be able to make the school bigger than what it is because they look down on a small HBCU and think it's really nothing, and everybody wants to go mm. to the big uh, universities. But once I'm yeah. able to sit here and do what I got to do, uh, maybe even take them to the championship, that's the goal, get MVP, be able to put everybody on a the map, then everybody's going to want to be a Tiger. I love it. I love it. You're motivating me, but I mean, it's, I've already got my degree, so it's, you know, I, I don't think I can go back and try it again, but I can, I can cheer you on. And, you know, I, I love what the coach just said. We're family. And, you know, there's a lot to be said about that in our culture today um, because there isn't a lot of community. There isn't a lot of family feeling, and it's, it's, there's so much competition. But I like, I, I like your energy and the goals and the dreams. You know, let's win a championship. Let's put them on the map, you know, and, and let's go Tiger. You know, somebody just put up here uh, as a Tiger fan, I, and I say that too. You know, what a great opportunity for you. Um, and it seems like it was a good idea to come out for the summer program. When does uh, the fall program actually start? Uh, actually, we started today. Today was our first oh, day of okay. classes. Yeah. We started our first day of classes today. You know, it was really good. It was really welcoming from all the teachers. I like that it's also really a small campus, and you're able to be, like, one-on-one with your professors. You don't got to beg for the Ooh. professor to give you time. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I really do like the culture here. That's huge. That kind of culture is huge, and that can have, a, you know, a huge impact on – your educational life and experience, but also your future life, because they can, the professors can build into you in a way, especially when you can get to them like that. You don't feel like you're on this checklist and they're watching the clock, you know, no offense to any professor that has to do that. Cause I know it's tough. It's you're a big school or something like that, but in this kind of an atmosphere to feel loved by coaches and, and I'm sure you will feel that love by professors and, um, you know, I mean, that's exciting. That really is. And what a great place to be. Now, do you have family out there or is your family out here or both? Uh, my family out in California. Okay. That's what I was thinking. So I guess that's a switch too for you. I mean, moving from Cali, you know, South Carolina, it's a different culture in and of itself. I travel around and speak at events and things, and I love the Carolinas. Uh, there's just a laid back attitude. The food is awesome. The people are friendly. You know, I don't know if it's just because I was what I experienced, but what I experienced there was was really great. I mean, it was it was amazing. Now, let's switch just quickly, because when I was looking at your bio, you're a member of Screen Actors Guild. You're an actor. Whoa. I mean, you got football, basketball, <laughs> your classes. You've got what? How did you get started in acting, and what kind of stuff have you done? So uh, it was really just me starting to acting. It was just just to have fun with it. I wasn't trying to take it serious at all. Uh-huh. Uh, and I ended up doing my first audition, and I got my first audition actually for uh, White Man Can't Jump Two. <laughs> yeah, classic, classic. So I ended up uh, getting to my first try. You know, I did it, and then from there, uh, me, I went, I made a mark. When I was at the set, you know, I was very networking with my uh, with my peers and everything, mm-hmm. and everybody just liked the way I present myself and the way I come as I am, you know, not trying to change who I am to try to be somebody else. And yep. from there, I just really pushed a lot of connections, and now I'm getting calls 24-7. So really? now, yeah, so now I'm just, you know, I'm working on taking this really seriously along with my basketball career. So hopefully we just got to see how it goes. You know, I got two paths I could take. So it's always the yeah, backup. Yeah, you do. That, you know, that's amazing. That really is cool. And, and I take it you enjoy the acting. A lot, a lot. 
Yeah. Everybody has fun when you act. Yeah, it's, I haven't done what you have. I've just been an extra in a few films, but, you know, I got kind of bit by the bug and I want to do more. I enjoyed it, you know, and I mean, people don't really, you know this better than I do because you've done more than I have. I mean, the long days, I mean, it's not just, you know, come in and sit at the food tin and just have a bite to eat and, hey, come here, come here, shoot, 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 go, 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 you know. I mean, it's, I remember, I think the one of them, it was like a 6 p.m. call time and we left at 6 a.m., um, you know, and I think the other one was a, a 12 p.m. call time. I don't remember what time I left on that one. But anyway, the, you know, what a great experience. And what a uh, what a cool opportunity. To, I mean, you could choose to go either way or you can do both and you can have a lot of fun with it. And we have a mutual friend in Shell Bailey, you know, and he played pro ball and, and he went to the acting thing. But, you know, yeah, that's I, mean, what I, it, I know exactly what you're talking about. And he's a great guy, and, and he, you know, it's, in fact, I think his new, something he filmed recently just won an award or something. So, I mean, that's awesome that you're getting that start at, at you know, a younger age. But it sounds to me like you've got, there's a balance, you know. And you said something that I think is huge in, in our world today a couple minutes ago, and I want to come back to it. You're not trying to be somebody or something you're not. Yeah, you know, so it's... Yeah, yeah, me being a kid from Compton, you know, I don't want to go out to the other world, you know. You have to know how to co-switch, but there's a certain way you can co-switch while still be keeping your roots, you know. I want to be able to go out yeah. there and show that, you know, I still am a kid from Compton. I still made it out that system. I still made it out the Compton system. I still am who I am. Who I am. And I want to be able to show, you know, more Compton kids that you don't have to change who you are to be successful. You can always be yourself. Oh, that is so huge, you know, really. It, and we have such a struggle with identity today and people. And I mean, I think, it, you know, people blame different things. And, and you know, some people say, well, it's because social media. No, it, it's a combination of things. But when you know who you are and you're anchored to that and you don't change, don't, don't matter who's there, where you are. And, you know, like going on to a film set, you go on as yourself. Now, I mean, there's acting involved, obviously, but, you know, to go on as yourself, not with an attitude, not, and, and I love this whole thing of, you know, you're a kid from Compton, but, but you made it out and you can be an example to other kids from Compton, you know, and say, Hey, look, not that I'm anything special, but you know, the discipline, the mindset, the perseverance, you know, all the stuff you're doing and all the, I mean, it all comes to, I think, foundationally from. Uh, being an athlete, you're not going to be a, you're you're not going to be the athlete you are now without those things, without that discipline. I mean, it takes that because it it, it ain't going to happen. You know, being lazy or anything else. Some guys think they can, you know, kind of squeeze through it and slide through it and all, but that isn't the way it is at all. Um, I mean, you know way better than I do. Are you how how do you see yourself being able to keep the balance between everything? Okay, because you've got classes. And I'm assuming you're taking a full load. Yeah, full load. Okay. And, you know, you've got the potential of maybe some acting gigs or whatever. And then you got you got the basketball team. So how – have you figured that out yet? Or is it you're kind of in an embryonic stage and going, okay, I gotta, I've got to get into this, slide in, I've got to figure out where, how it's going to work for me. So right now, you know, I'm kind of in between right now on everything and how everything is going. Uh-huh. Uh, I kind of have a sense of what I want to do. So some I have like certain projects coming out that if I do get it, I'm able to fly out. And then when I fly out, I'll be able to change my classes from in school to online. Oh, nice. So then, yeah, so I'll be able to balance that while I'm out there. And then I'll always, I'll always keep working out no matter what to stay in shape so that by the time I get back from a film or something, I'm able to play in the season and help my team get to the championship and, mm-hmm. you know, win as much games as possible. But, sure. you know, it, 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 it always is stressful, you know. It always plays in your mind because, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on. Me just turning 18, being an 18-year-old and having an uh, acting career and then a sports career, and then I got a full caseload as a student. And, you know, uh, all the certain things that always be in your head. But, you know, I just got to be humble. I got to, you know, not try to stress myself out too much. You know, I got here. I am here, you know. Now it's, yeah. just, trying to stay at, I just, it's just trying to stay at this certain point where I'm at. Cause I don't want to go down at all because if I go down, then there's no way to get back up. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a slippery slide once you start going down that hole. So, 
I mean, yeah. it sounds like you you've got a great sense of balance already, you know, and I want to encourage you because you've got so much potential that um, it's almost scary in one sense. Now, I got to I got to divert just a little bit for a minute. Because when you sent us your bio material, and I had said, do you have a nickname that people call you? <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you say your nickname, and I want to know how you got it. All right, so Crazo, uh, when I was younger, I was, you know, just being a kid, being a kid. Yeah. I remember we uh, we had went camping, and it was, uh, my older cousins was, like, up a hill, and, you know, uh, it's, just, it's this lake called Lake Paris. Yeah. And at, and at nighttime, you know, the coyote's always out. <laughs> So when I was younger, about like seven years old, all my older cousins, it was up the hill. And I went up the hill by myself, running from the coyotes and everything. And then when I got down, my uncle was like, man, you're crazy. I'm going to call you crazy. And then from then, you know, I was just been me. And then I just used the name crazy because it had a ring to it. <laughs> I love it. It's got a great ring to it. And I love that whole thing of going out there where the coyotes are. It's where I live. I live right next to the to the mountains. We okay. sometimes get these packs of coyotes coming through. I mean, literally just right down the street, you know, and you can hear them. And it's it's kind of a eerie thing late at night when you hear their their moaning and their, you know, growling and whatever you want to call it. So <laughs> <Exactly>. crazy. So <laughs> well, it seems like that would carry over to uh the broader part of your life too with everything you got going yeah you know it always just carries over i always say i'm crazy you know i'm i'm gonna be crazy i'm gonna have fun no matter what but i can always know when to be serious but living life having fun you know always got to keep a smile on your face no matter how stressed you are you just got to be able to keep pushing and being able to yeah. just you know, have fun that's what i always keep on my mind Great attitude. You know, that's a healthy attitude because too many people lose perspective and there's always a reason to smile. There's always a reason to be grateful. I know I kind of practice this little thing in my mind. Like if I see somebody who's, you know, missing a leg or somebody who's in one of those electric wheelchair things or whatever, it's like, hey, you know, I may have struggles. I may have things that stress me, but I, I got a lot to be thankful for. You know, all that kind of stuff. So there's, uh, I think we need to develop a better attitude of thankfulness in our culture, you know, and balance. And like you said, a smile on your face. There's always something to smile about. Um, even if it's goofy, even if it's crazy, you know, it's still, you can still smile. and You can still enjoy. And, and I know I have family members that, they haven't called me crazy, but they might as well because I'm always saying something crazy or I'm all, you know, it's like, are you ever going to grow up? No, I don't want to grow up. You know, <laughs> there's too many things. I want to have fun. I want to laugh. Exactly. You know? And then yeah. I get the friends that kind of give me the, you know, roll their eyes. If I say something, it's like, oh, come on, get a life, you know, lighten up, lighten up. Just, you know, I mean, just have some fun. You've alluded to this already as we've talked, but I'm going to ask you more directly. When you think about your life and you've got all these things that these pieces that, I mean, are, are amazing. And I think anybody, you know, I think people in our audience would say, well, man, I wish I could play ball like he does, or I wish I had the acting opportunity, or I wish I had the scholarship when I went to a school like Voorhees. And, and so you've got so many positive pieces, but if you were to write since you are an actor, remember the Screen Actors Guild, if you were to write a script for the future of your life, where do you, what's your dream? Where do you see yourself, you know, down the road um, and however far you want to go? But I'm just kind of curious, if you wrote, you're writing that script, how would you write it and where would you be headed? Well, you know, of course, the title would be uh, one of my greatest mottos I always like to say is don't take anything for granted. Oh, because, oh, oh, uh, nice. You know, that would be the start of it. And, you know, the whole script would just be starting from the point A and getting, uh, getting to point B because that's what it's all about, you know, starting from somewhere where you had nothing and you're able to get something. And then while you have something, you're able to keep having something. You're able to keep having something. Then you're able to branch off and give it to other people and be able to, uh, you know, be somebody bigger. You know, I want, I want, I want to leave. I want to leave a marks everywhere, everywhere. I want everybody to be like, oh, that's Malika. Oh, that's Malika. He did this. He did that. Yeah. So the whole script would just be, you know, my whole life. Now, are you sure, Malachi, you're only 18? Because you've got, <laughs> you know, you've got wisdom, dude, well beyond your years. You really do. I mean, what you're saying, that, that I mean, if we just said, good night, you know, we'll, we'll talk to you later kind of a thing. What you just said of not taking things for granted is so huge. 
you know, as being an 18 year old, it feels like sometimes I'd be like, dang, is everything going by so fast? You know, and am I going too mm -hmm. fast? But sometimes, you know, I'm, I just feel like I'm going at my own pace. You know, it might seem yeah. faster yeah. than everybody else because I'm getting more things than everybody else have. But at a point in the time, I had nothing. I had zero. And I've spent every day of my life trying to work to get to somewhere bigger. And every day of my life, every time I work, I knew something greater was coming out of it. So it wasn't mm -hmm. me trying to just, you know, life going by faster than everybody else's because it was me planning everything from point A to point B. Everything I said I wanted to do, I'm getting it. Everything I said I wanted to be, I'm doing it because I want to be able to manifest and keep manifesting good things. Where did you get the the perseverance, the energy, the perspective? You know, somebody just said what an inspiration, and I would I would echo that. You're a great uh, inspiration for people your own age and older. But uh, and and I want to touch on your background in in just a moment because I think it's important. I think it puts everything in perspective. But what has enabled you to keep on keeping on, to not take things for granted, to take advantage of opportunities in a positive way and stay at it and stay focused? Anything in particular? Any, uh, I mean, how have you been able to do that? All my life, you know, I just really had to keep my head straight. I always thought, you know, every time something bad happened, I always thought, oh, this, this happened to four reasons. So this, everything's just building up pieces for me to get to somewhere bigger. So every mm. time something happened, I'm just thinking like, all right, well, this is just a trial. I got to get over it. And as long as I yeah. keep fighting, I'm, I'm going to get something better because I don't want to just, you know, be able to get the trials and, the, and then I'm failing and I'm failing and then I give up because if I give up, then everybody else is going to want to give up. I want to be a role model to where kids seeing me going through everything and I'm able to tell my story and they get back and they were like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And they'll be able to oh, keep happening yes. on the generation yeah. to generation saying, you know, he did it, then he did it, then she did it, and then she did it, and then he did it. Then it just keeps yep. going, and everybody keeps inspiring others. You know, that's, that is, that's amazing because that is exactly what we need. You know, um, we work, obviously, with students. This show you talk is about, uh, you know, it's, it's about you talking to us, and it's designed for teens and young adults. And, you know, we want to be an inspiration. We want to be an encouragement. We want to have people like you come and have a conversation with us. Um, because we can say one thing, but you can say it because you're living it right now. You know, you're, you're in the moment right there and being, being as somebody else just put up inspirational, you know, keep, uh, if I could encourage you, keep doing what you're doing and being an inspiration because this generation and the next generation and the next generation, you know, and so on need people that can inspire them, need people that they can look at and say, Man, if he can do it, I, I can do it. I, I I know I can do it, you know, because I, I see what he's done and I understand it. And maybe they were in a similar situation. Maybe they weren't. But, well, let's jump to you from the age of five, if I'm getting the facts right, you grew up in the foster care system. Yes. What would... I mean, it's a it's a kind of a dumb question. Sorry, but what was it like growing up like that? Um, you know, we we hear a lot about it. Um, we have a heart here at Utah for uh, foster kids. You know, we want to be able to help them. But but you you've lived it. What was that like for you? So you know, uh, growing up in foster care, everybody has their own story. So I'm not going to speak. You know, on the broad of everybody's story, I'll speak on mine. Sure. Yeah, growing up, you know, being in that certain situation where you start getting to the mindset where you're starting to realize, oh, are they doing it for the money or are they doing it to help me? Oh, you know, yeah. it gets to that certain situation where yeah. they're doing stuff for their benefit and not trying to help you benefit to, to the point where you have to get out the situation yourself. And that's what it got down to me where I finally had to realize, you know, everything's on me. That I, if, they're, if they're not going to help, they're going to try to keep taking me down. I have to keep doing what I have to do. And I have to keep trying to push myself. Because if I don't push myself, nobody else is. Because at the end of the day, I have my back. I have a brother. I have little sisters that are looking after me, trying to uh, see what I'm going to do. And I had mm -hmm. to be the person that uh, you know, spoke up. And as soon as I got out of that situation, everything started being something bigger. Because I started to realize you know, that was the reason it was holding me back. And once you start Whoa. to realize what's holding you back and you start pushing through, nobody can stop you after that. And now nobody is stopping me. I'm able to push myself to be 10 times better than I am right now. I'm able to be 10 times more focused. And now it's only up from here. It's not no more going down. Yeah, yeah. 
somebody just put up such strength at a young age. And that is what is, you know, is resonating with me. I mean, it's the ability you've had to push through with it and, and the wisdom that you've had at such a young age and the strength and the perseverance, you know, is, is amazing to me. It, it just, where, did, yeah, uh, where, where did all that come from Malachi? You know, uh, at a point in time, it was a point where, you know, I thought I couldn't get out of the situation. You know, it got mm. to a point where I couldn't. It was certain people that came into my life that were able to push me. You know, so many people that supported you because of the way I acted and the way I put myself out there. And I showed mm. that I had strength and I, they saw potential in me to the point where they were able to push me out that session. They were able to talk to me saying, you can do it. You know, uh, one of the person that really helped me, her name's Sky Harris. She really helped me a lot. She pushed my uh, mm. she pushed myself to get out that certain situation, and you know, with with having that person like that, that's what I want to be to other kids, where I can show them, you know, I I am that person that can help you. You know, you're not there by yeah. yourself, because yeah. everybody doesn't have a person like her. Everybody doesn't have nobody that can be behind their back, and yep. they have, yep. they don't have nobody that can show them the way out, show them a clear path. They're able to be like, all right, well now I can. Well now, if he's doing it and he's telling me that if I get out to such a certain situation that. I have a lot of potential to be something better than I'm going to do that. And I'm going to take the opportunity. So with that being, you know, you have to have somebody beyond your back. You have to have a team. You can't at a point in time, you can get to somewhere. Yeah. But there's a certain point in time where you have to have people behind your back because you can't be alone your whole life. No, you, always no, you can't even have a support system. You got to have that, the, the people supporting you, that community, these individuals you've had that have come alongside you. Um, and, you know, you keep talking about being a role model, being an example. That is so necessary because um, kids today are looking around for that. You know, I mean, I think even adults are. It's like, who's who's real? Who's the real deal? You know, yeah, it's one thing to get up and, you know, shoot your mouth off in some presentation or, you know, whatever, social media, whatever it is. But it's another thing to live it. And you're living it. And I encourage you to keep doing it and be that example because there are others that are going to watch you real close, especially because of your profile, you know, being a ball player, being an actor, you know, all of that stuff. And, and I think it's so needed and I can't encourage you enough. Um, I mean, what a blessing to have people in your life that have helped you like that. Now, I was um, looking at your social media and Instagram, and I saw a post that you put up, and you announced there that you would commit to play ball for Voorhees, and, and, you know, you thanked, interesting, you thanked your family and friends for showing the love to you and pushing you through the last two years. And you also thank God for making you who you are. You don't know this because we haven't talked before this other than, you know, emails back and forth, but we're really big at you talk about being the change and going mad, making a difference. And you just encapsulated it, I think, in such a great way. Here's family and friends believing in you, giving you the love, pushing you on in a positive way. Your, your identity, you say, okay, God, thanks for making me who I am. Why is it, Malachi, why is surrounding yourself with the right community so important in life? I feel like, uh, you know, being born, you know, I feel like I was picked to be in this situation because a, a lot of kids can't be in this situation and handle it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people yeah. break down. You know, you see a lot of suicides and people uh, going through depression and not being able to do it. Yeah. I was able yeah. to push through that certain situations and being able to surround myself with the right people, not going into the bad crowd not going into the bad situation. I was able mm. to uh, get the help I need to get out of that bad crowd and be yeah. able to change myself. And while I changed myself, I had people around me that uh, showed me nothing but love and support that helped me push somewhere to be who I am and push myself to be stronger. Because at, if you are if you put yourself out there and showing that you want to be better and that you want to uh, get to your highest potential, yeah, yeah. And, from there, everybody will, uh, they'll surround you. They'll all be around you and want to help you out way more. So it's about choices, really. I mean, because you, you've got two significant things. I mean, there's so many 100%. great things you've hit on, but, but this whole thing of not taking anything for granted and the choices you make. I mean, choices, it, it's, I go into to, uh, schools, you know, bring my drums along and I, I play a little drums. I talk about making choices because, it, you know, you are, you're a product today of, of the decisions you've made in the past. 
and your future is going to be directly affected by the choices you make right now. So you take those two things and everything else together. I mean, it's so critical. It, it's just so critical to make good choices, make healthy choices, and surround yourself with the right people. Because we need that. We need a community of people with us. And it sounds like you've had an amazing one, especially the last two years, because it sounds like it was especially starting to play basketball and everything going on that you needed that community, that support, that family, that you needed to know you were loved and people cared about you. And, and I mean, that that's just awesome. That is that is so cool. It really is. It's well, we could talk for hours. <laughs> <laughs> you've got so much to say. And, and I appreciate you taking time. You know, to no come problem. on the show because I know I know you've been super busy with so many different things, and yeah. it, this worked out perfect. And we're going to have to have you come back, you know, to you talk because there's just too many things to talk about. And I want to <laughs> um, uh, somehow I got to find a way to to see you in action on the court. So I don't know if you're going to be playing anybody out in in this direction, but if I get, I travel, so if I get back that way, I'll try to work it out because I would like to see you in action. But what's um, What's the best way for people to keep up with you on social media, follow you, and maybe even be an encouragement to you? Uh, Are you being an encouragement to them when they see what you're doing? <laughs> uh, Instagram, right here, the Malachi Sky. You can always text me if you if you need help with anything. You need to be humble. You know, want to talk. I always want to be that person that can help you. You know, I don't want anybody awesome. to be by themselves. Or awesome. I also have Twitter where it's. Is the Malachi Scott, but with one E, is T-H-E, Malachi Scott. Okay, okay. Well, we'll oh, try snap. to put that in the notes for the show so people can follow you. Because I, I want to encourage people to, when we see somebody like you and we connect with you and, and being a good role model, and nobody's perfect, we understand that. But, you know, you've got your eyes on the prize. You know, your, your, your head is focused right. And if we can help others see the example that you are, uh, then it's a win-win situation. So please keep us informed. Uh, I think we're already following you. I need to double check and make sure. But um, keep us informed what you're doing because we definitely have to have you come back on. And um, we will remind people, uh, if if you're watching the show um, right now, this will be available for viewing on demand on Instagram TV in about an hour. Uh, looks like we just lost Malachi, but uh, we're bringing things down to a close and uh, Malachi, if you can hear us, great to have you with us. We'll look forward to some more time together. And I just want to remind you, follow us at Utah Radio, U-T-A-L-K Radio, because uh, that's how you're going to find out about great guests like we had uh, on the show today with Malachi. Malachi, thank you for taking time with us. We'll look forward to uh, having you on again. This is Utah Radio.